Good afternoon. I'm Lokesh Mittal and he's Vishwanath Pratap Singh. We're here from Make My Trip, the India's biggest OTA, to talk about non-functional testing. So let's talk about why we do why do we need this non-functional testing? What was the need behind it? So as we all know that the e-commerce industry has grown rapidly in the last decade, and especially the mobile online transactions happening on mobile has increased in the last couple of years substantially. So what does this mean? This means that the mobile application is running on the device and OS combination, which is N number. There's OS spread, fragmented devices and OS threads. So we have to cover all of them for both functional and non-functional testing. So from there, uh, audible now? So from there we got this uh, crux that we need to work upon the non-functional testing for mobile applications as well. So what was that, that we had been doing in the past. So we had been doing this non-functional testing for a server-side applications for quite some time and capturing some key matrices like memory, CPU, uh, utilizations, the network utilizations. And uh, we actually did not have a benchmark for the app-side matrices that we need to publish. So what we did is that we benchmarked our server-side matrices and used and uh, tried to implement and check on those, same for the app-side as well. So other than that, there's a few more uh, matrices key matrices that uh, luckily Google has started publishing a couple of years back and you get that for all applications over the Play Store. So they are like uh, the activity lifecycle time, the overall app, app performance basis, the internal uh, storage that it has, the shared preferences that is being used and uh, the jan janky frames. Then there's a battery health check. So uh, these are the kind of matrices that uh, Google has started providing us with. So these along with what we were already tracking uh, is the key set of matrices that we actually work upon during a performance monitoring. And then we have part as performance engineering as well, we're improving upon things. So uh, there's another thing like, why, what exactly did we feel the need for non-functional test automation? So uh, we were a hybrid application, few years uh, back in the line. So then we moved on to a native and more personalized application. So at that time, it became absolutely necessary that we uh, work upon these non-functional testing. Because we, during the manual testing and the development itself, we observed that the, uh, what you can say is that there were lags when we were transitioning from one activity to other. There were battery consumption issues that we already faced during a manual testing. So uh, there was no way to get these data in a concise and in a particular manner that it is absolutely correct. So for that, we, had a journey. So I'll walk you through our journey. So a journey began that we started manual testing these performance uh, matrices using third party applications available on the Play Store and over the internet. But the data was not reliable that we were getting out of it. And every application had its own set of data and the benchmark, we did not have a benchmark then. So how to prove the reliability of the applications. So we moved on to a better renowned Trepon, uh, Trepin uh, tool by Qualcomm. So the beauty of the tool was that what we were doing with multiple application, this application had as a, it's like an APK which installs over installs and uh, like uh, lays an overlay over your application under test, and that after your test is executed, it gives you all the key matrices and the data that you're looking for in one place. So that concise report was the thing, but uh, we even integrated with our uh, automation solution. We did a POC around it. But there was a challenge with that we observed that the matrix reliability again was a challenge. With the same set of tests, with the same scenario being executed multiple times, the results that we were getting were not accurate, were not seen. So that got us into thinking that of the reliability of this tool as well. So we moved on and we worked with ADB commands. We created a script, integrated with our uh, automation framework. And uh, using that, we started capturing data. So it was a good success that we were able to get the data finally and every time we were getting the same data but the reliability constraint was changed to that we were not able to get the data when we wanted it so let's say if i am launching an activity in an app i'm launching a particular screen so what happens is i want the data then and there that is my scenario so with this adb commands and the automation framework i was not able to get the state that the activity has launched we'll have to wait for an element or get to know when the screen is completely loaded. So, but my matrices are gone till then. Maybe the consumption was high during the on-create of that activity. 
So this was the reason that we moved away from the ADB commands as well. We then moved on and tried with uh, tried tool DDMS, which is provided in the Android SDK itself. So it was not an automated solution though, but uh, the reliability was quite high. So we were able to capture uh, like profile a debug APK with DDMS, run our test and manually intervene with DDMS to capture all the matrices that we were looking for. So this manual intervention had caused us a delta of errors uh, quite some time. So that is the reason we had to move away from that as well. Then they, with Android Studio 3.0, it came, Android Profiler came into picture. So we started using that, that we connected our device under test to the system, profiled it using Android Profiler, and Profiler was getting all the data and matrices that we wanted in a much, uh, vis that was visualized as well. We can visualize it very well then. But uh, the app became sluggish when it was being used with the Profiler. So we were not able to uh, like rely on the matrices that we we're getting because the app is sluggish. So now we had to move on to something which is which has no manual intervention. Then only we can rely on the results. So that got us into thinking of building an automation framework for this non-functional testing and integrating it with our automation framework. It was Appium then. So we integrated with our Appium framework and we got the results. We were happy with the results. We were getting it consistent. The reliability was there. There was no manual intervention. So it was quite good and we were able to achieve what we were looking for in this complete journey. So, uh, but there was some scenarios wherein we were not able to accomplish those scenarios, uh, uh, the current RPM automation framework. Uh, so to list down few, let's say that I want my app to re uh, clear its state after every test so that the consumption matrices and everything is cleared. Now afresh, I'm getting the data for every test cycle. It's not cumulative. So that was not, a I was not able to do that with RPM. So what we did is, and there, uh, uh, some internal Google APIs, the Android APIs, the methods that you can use to get these matrices. Because like the debug uh, API, the package manager API, the activity context, the activity itself has a lot of information about the activity that you are looking at, what API response it has, and a lot many things. So that we were not able to get with Appium because it's residing outside the application. It's working over the UI layer. So what we did is that we integrated this automated solution with Espresso, we moved on to Espresso, which is residing inside the application, having context of the code and getting all these information that we wanted, the APIs that we wanted, the activity context to accomplish this. So that is how we moved on to this solution. So we can carry on with the. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Lokesh, for the uh, introduction and what we are going to cover uh, in today's session. So basically we have uh, divided the whole topic into our two sections. The first thing is performance testing in which we will talk about the numbers, the throughputs and the, all the matrices, key matrices that we are going to capture. And in the second one is the performance engineering which is basically how we can improve the things that, that has been degraded or be found that optimization is required. So in application performance, uh, uh, we are capturing the three main uh, parameter of application. The first one is memory, second one is uh, CPU, and the third one is uh, network data. <coughs> As end-on memory is further se uh, segregated into a two further uh, subcategory like Dalvik memory and native memory. So Dalvik memory is the heap memory which is allocated by the Java object, and the uh, native memory is basically the uh, operating system uh, needed some system services uh, to run like C or C++ library. So the, the Android operating system do not have any kind of check in native side of memory. It can take uh, how much memory available to the operating system, but definitely there is a check on uh, Dalvik side. So for every device, there is a check that application cannot use greater than a particular <coughs> amount of memory that is defined by the operating system. So if, if application try to capture those memory, we, we found the out of memory kind of issues here. So in <coughs> CPU, in CPU we also capture the system space and the user space CPU. So system space CPU is basically the CPU is used by the kernel and the user space is the processes running inside our application. And the, uh, we also capturing the IO weight. If any IO operation is being done by the application, that what, uh, how much time it is being uh, taken by this particular operation. So we have captured this kind of matrix also. And the third one is the network data. The network data used by the application for a particular test cases level. 
so the rx data is basically the data received by the application tx data is basically the data transmitted and the total data is basically the sum of the transmitted plus received data so this is a framework this is a com uh, framework architecture is uh, common for android and ios as the same matrix we have captured for the android the same matrix we are also captured for ios for ios we have used xcui and for android we have used uh, espresso the same thing we also achieve with the apm also but uh, our requirement was different and we have to find some different inside of the application so we moved to this framework we opted this framework so basically uh, here is our uh, application code base itself so we have a utility uh, nfr utility kind of thing so in espresso all the test cases are run uh, by j unit so we have a j unit runner and we run our test case so in uh, for every test case we have segregated our nfr test case in such a manner that we can cover all the screen in in uh, android these are activities and and uh, in ios these are controllers ui controllers basically so for every scheme we have a test case so in the on before uh, of the test case we clear the application in a uh, we clear the database we clear the uh, application inter in internal data if any data application consume like network data or any uh, uh, db related data we clear the whole data and we perform in a uh, test case in such a manner that it is a freshly a uh, app for every test case so if the test case is passed then we capture the information by a utility we ask the uh, controller for a particular like memory cpu nfr it captures the data and we publish our data by using one internal api because we cannot hit directly uh, db layer inside our application so we need one utility or a api so that we can uh, transfer our data into our uh, db so we are using one api for capturing the data and we uh, put this data in our database and now we have a data we can uh, play with like we have a monitoring we can uh, capture the insight and all so uh, so but the thing is here uh, um, the thing is one challenge we uh, recently uh, we uh, face one challenge after using it uh, uh, after a couple of months that we are capturing a data for a particular amount of time we need it the test case asked for the memory data for the utility nfr utility it provide us a data for the memory or cpu but suppose if, if our test case is like we have to open a multiple screen and we are capturing the data after the test case is ended if suppose any tweaks is happening for memory or cpu that is miss, somehow miss somehow can miss so for this we have make a memory cpu or network utility as a service so they are capturing data for us uh, for every second one, one second if suppose if test case is run for 50 second and we have a data for 50 second so now we capture the mean we, uh, we, uh, we, we calculate the mean mode and median if suppose the um, cpu is uh, starting from 1 and it goes to 10 and the average is 5 and the delta is mode is basically 2 so we can cap, uh, say that plus minus 5 that it is the range of cpu that is varying for test case to test case so by using the uh, by using this service we can have a if any tweaks is there we can uh, easily get it by using the using this utility as a service for memory or cpu what it or any doubt so how we compute it so for computing uh, we are using uh, a uh, library ex uh, external library pro uh, provided by the google for uh, we are talking for android so we have a, a runtime and debug api for memory utilization so runtime api basically fetching the runtime memory of the application and uh, <coughs> debug api helps in finding the dalvik and native size of memory available for uh, for the uh, particular timestamp and we we can also capture the heap dump <coughs> by using debug api <coughs> heap dump is basically helpful if suppose we found any issue memory related issue and at a particular uh, our test case fail then automatically we capture he heap dump now for heap dump we have a manual uh, processing that at that time we capture the heap dump we analyze that how much uh, uh, what is the memory segregation for particular package level so we manually identify the cause for if if any issue happen for this and for cpu 
uh, for CPU we have uh, executed a uh, Linux top command in a separate process in a background uh, background thread. This thread is running uh, uh, um, in a background thread for a, a parallel processing. Like if we start our scenario, the, this thread automatically invokes and it pulls the application that how much uh, CPU is <coughs> consumed by our uh, application package and we process this data and dump it data to our database. We have uh, the debug API that we use for the memory also for the method tracing that we have used for the uh, further uh, thread analyzer tool we have and the, we, we uh, use this API for this purpose. And for network state we are using the uh, traffic state and connectivity manager API. Uh, traffic state API basically gives the uh, data uses, Rx data and Tx data, transmitted and uh, uploaded data uses and connectivity manager tells us that at that particular uh, time the application is connected to the which kind of data provider like Wi-Fi or cellular network. If it is a cellular network then what kind of speed is there, is, is it like uh, on 3G, on 4G, on, on uh, BOLT. So we also capture the because, because we have to compare the data. If suppose we are capturing a one test case data on 3G and the next time the um, device is on 4G then we cannot compare because it, it is on 3G and 4G. We have to compare a apple to apple con, uh, comparison. So we need to capture this kind of data also. So below is the code link. We have uh, uh, uploaded the whole uh, code related for this functionality in, uh, in uh, GitHub. You can check it here. And this is one blog that we publish for how we are uh, uh, capturing this data, why it is required and how we calculate and how it impact for uh, e-commerce application. So for greater insight we can uh, read it. And these are the API for iOS because the same thing we are capturing for the iOS as well by using XCUI. So for memory we have used the process info and uh, make task basic info API. And for thread we have a different API and for network we have ARPA and INET uh, API that we are uh, using it. So the same the code link is here and the separate block for iOS as well we have because the things are different in iOS In iOS don't have any kind of memory segregation and iOS garbage collection works also differently because it has a ARC automatic resource counter then the whole the memory and CPU related things are different so the UT, uh, so the um, uh, data capturing point and uh, data to, uh, tweaking point also different in uh, iOS suite. So this is a small code uh, snippet for uh, memory. Okay. For memory we are uh, runtime for getting the runtime memory and uh, at that time we can also capture the what is the heap size available for this for, for our application that is running. So we capture the runtime memory and the total heap available and if, if we uh, uh, subtract the one from the another then we can get the available heap at that particular amount of time. And this, uh, this, is, this thing we are capturing via runtime, this thing we are capturing via uh, debug API for, uh, for Dalbeck and DTF side memory and for if we need a uh, heap, heap dump, uh, heap dump is needed by our test case, if test case is fired, then it automatically uh, asks for the to capture the heap dump utility. Then it captures it and save it into our uh, device storage. And we can pull it and we can open it as an Android profiler so that we can debug in a. Uh, now we can now we are debugging by a, a totally human intervention. Uh, there is no automated solution for debugging, but for debugging of, of uh, CPU, we have automated solution that we will dis, uh, discuss in a different uh, slide. So for CPU that we uh, discussed that we are using a top command. So the top command we have run in a separate thread and we have passed this thread in a um, and we have passed this process in a uh, 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 in a thread and it is uh, checking that what kind of information you need. So suppose if we are taking for the com dot make my trip as well. So if 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 any if uh, we have a different application then we have to pass the uh, package name different and it can easily get the uh, CPU uh, uses uh, for, for this application. So once we have a data in our uh, database, so we can uh, use it for 
like pass fail purpose data validation purpose and for reporting purpose so we have a jenkins the whole suit is uh, scheduled with a jenkins uh, job so it runs uh, two times in a day uh, in morning and in evening so that we be because the application uh, uh, application really uh, releases uh, so fast that every after 15 to 20 days we have to release some features then we have to tag that by adding extra feature we, we, we are not uh, dealing with our uh, key parameters constraint that we have we have some threshold that we if the uh, if the uh, uh, matrix is within the limit then we can only go ahead otherwise the application will not go live while having these kind of issues that we found in this uh, matrices so here in this uh, at that time the application uh, running memory available for application is a uh, uh, approx 400 mb and, and the and the app memory take, uh, taken by the devices is along 100 to 115 mb so this is the trend that uh, we, we are uh, the application is beha behaving well and we don't have any constraint for memory and this is the segregation of native and dalvik okay, what how much the native memory is uh, taking this is further segregated in this suppose we found any issue okay, our application consumption increase then we can look into okay, it is a native side increment or it is a dalvik side increment so for the visualization we have a further segregation if we combine the native and dalvik go it is approximately the same memory that is the application running memory so it helps us for while debugging issue if we found any memory related issue it is basically on the which which code level it is from our uh, code itself or we are using some extra library because of them so this is the key type of issue that we can uh, found in our uh, general suits like memory uh, uses uh, increase and memory leak kind of issues this is the representation of uh, cpu the cpu we have categorized into a two different category like user space cpu and the system space cpu so this is that uh, trend and we are also capturing the mean mode and medium that we discuss so that we can check what is the limit of the cpu for running the particular uh, test case or scenario this is for the network data how much is the data downloaded by the application how much data is transmitted by the application and the total data of the application at the particular amount of time this is a uh, one kind of uh, uh, metric we have covered which was nfr now the second uh, we have categorized this in the application performance and uh, application performance throughput in which we will deal uh, uh, about the numbers and the same information we are uh, uh, also getting uh, from the google play store that is recent google recently started uh, locate also debrief the same so this kind of but the uh, problem is the google provided data which is on the after production data when that uh, application is in live state we cannot do anything because the application is live but we have to capture this data in a pre-production phase so that we can we can uh, we can capture it in an initial phase and we can able to fix it before going application is live so in this we are capturing the basically the overall application memory overall application cpu internal storage internal storage uh, used by the application database used by the application which is basically a shared preferences in terms of android how much data is being saved into a shared preferences there should be a limit uh, as we cannot uh, save everything in shared preferences if we if we are doing this then definitely there will be a ui delay and we will find some uh, application uh, loading uh, slow ui uh, slow rendering problem and we can also observe the slow case as well and we also have a activity life cycle uh, performance so basically as we all know that android ha android has a everything that we see is an activity an activity has its life cycle it li its life cycle governed with the different method like on create on pause on resume on on start so basically what the uh, life cycle suggests that we should not do any heavy operation on on create or on pause if we are doing this then definitely there will be a delay in rendering the ui and we, we will feel a sluggish also so this thing will help to check that the every operation that is being done on the on create method and on pause method is not on main thread or we are not hitting any api on this on these methods as well 
so now uh, next is how we are going to compute it so uh, in the previous that uh, we have uh, we have a solution in which we run our script for from now we are not running any script this is a as a service it is automatically running in our application but it only debug build not on uh, not on uh, in the release build only debug build so how uh, we compute it we have a one debug implementation we have implemented our application in a debug mode and we have uh, uh, extended the life uh, acti activity life cycle there in, acti in activity life cycle we have provided the information of the activity in a logging uh, manner like activity on create time uh, is there memory uses or CPU uses or the network data information the all the information is written in a log so we have a one logger service the role of this logger service is to read the data that we have published in the debug implementation as the debug implementation extend the activity life cycle so we do not take care about the that we have to pass any activity name or application context every time it automatically capture for a different different screen as we move on to the different different screen of the application so the logger service reads the data and it uh, uh, capture the data and format the data in a manner that in, in which we uh, require it and it uh, process the data after hitting one API and we store the data into our DB layer once our DB layer uh, once the data is there we publish the data in such a manner that it uh, we can check it for the device level we have a device level checks here we can because the application is in uh, multiple devices and the multiple devices have a different Android version also so we can uh, check it that in uh, suppose Android uh, 23 what is the average memory or CPU uses are there or um, Android version 24 or 25 what is the difference on there so we can check here that the different uh, there's we have a fragmented uh, operating system in Android so we can check that the in Android version and API level also the thing get changed the things get vary because these are uh, internally processing by the different API version and the skin uh, as uh, Android has a different uh, segmented of screens uh, some has 4.5 uh, inch or some skin has a 5 inch or 6 inch so the definitely the matrix will be different so for uh, for tracking for the individual kind of uh, devices we have a different uh, different uh, test devices that we have configured for uh, capturing the data So here uh, the shared preferences uses is about 203 KB if as Google suggests that the if the limit of shared preferences should not be greater than 1400 of KB but uh, many applications store the data in um, more than 2 MB or 3 MB then definitely we can find some uh, delay while rendering and performing operation. So these health check we can provide it here and also we have uh, some threshold we have set for 80% and 80% as CPU if the threshold uh, uh, will be greater than this then automatically there will be trigger uh, it will trigger our email and send us tool that the application memory performance is greater than the threshold that we have set for our application so this is a one kind of uh, thing that we are showing this is the overall basically application uh, performance monitoring the in this the second one by the activity life cycle performance so in the activity life cycle performance as we uh, uh, discuss that the in Android everything uh, is a activity that we are uh, uh, seeing or visualizing. So in activity like uh, this is the issue we found in the uh, in while running our suit in our application the initially the on create time by 3.65 and on post time by 4 seconds it is quite high it should not be greater than 6, 1600 or 1700 millisecond. So we found then we checked that the many things were doing on the uh, main thread itself. So some, somehow then we optimize it and move it to the back, uh, background thread and we stop some heavy operation like bitmap loading and all. So we were able to uh, come in uh, under six, uh, 1600 millisecond in, uh, on create and on pause time. So it is recommended that we should not do any, any, uh, any costly operation in on create and on pause because we are transition then if, if, if we are doing heavy operation on the previous scene definitely it will cause a delay in uh, introducing for the second uh, screen the next thing is uh, UI performance and slow rendering so 
Google also provide uh, a same in, uh, uh, a different information by using the same uh, matrix. Uh, they call it as a, a frozen frames or slow frames, and we we are capturing the janky frames. So the definition is different, but internally they are interlinked. So the janky frames are the frames. Uh, if any frames uh, on uh, UI is taking more than sixteen millisecond of time in rendering. then it comes in uh, under a category of uh, uh, janky frames so if suppose the, uh, for every refresh cycle there should be in one second 60 frames should be rendered in android um, ui if the frames are missed then de uh, definitely you, you can feel a sluggish and um, a bad uh, uh, behavior of application in, in terms of uh, android they are uh, uh, the frozen frames are the frame they are taking more than 700 millisecond in a particular session so the long if the frame uh, is not able to render after a six, seven, uh, 700 millisecond they are capturing the information and provided in a google play uh, console and In, uh, internally they are interlinked if if somehow we can optimize the janky frame definitely there would not be a frozen frames kind of thing uh, in uh, google play console so uh, what kind of matrix we are we are uh, covering here the janky frames on uh, on activity level how many frames are rendered and how many frames are janky frames and the uh, what is the average time taken by the frames to render on the screen so for this we have a frame matrix implementation there is one google provided one api in android version greater than 25 we can implement it in our activity life cycle and we capture the uh, activity name and the total number of frame render and how much is the janky frames in there and we publish it in our db this is the basically code is, uh, snippet there is one class activity frame builder it implement a uh, frame matrix dot builder it provide some activity life cycle method so in uh, it, it it only support android version greater than n so here we are going to capture it as we have overwritten method then it automatically capture the related information as the activity switches from one to another so we are capturing the activity name the frame time average frame time and uh, total number of frame render for a particular screen and all so this is the representation this is for whole app the total number and this is for a particular uh, ui or activity you are uh, looking for this is our home screen the total frame rendered was 10000 and the janky frames were uh, approximately 1700 were janky frames and the average time was initially 18 89 millisecond it should be in a range of more, not more than 16 millisecond but it is quite high so we need to improve this and we raised this issue and we got the solution for this so uh, we uh, check the thing like memory cpu and janky frames and uh, all so the things are different but inter, uh, but uh, they are interrelated to each other so if the if the frames are not rendered properly then definitely they will cause uh, cpu cpu will a uh, process more if the cpu processor is more then the battery consumption will be high so uh, internally they all are connected if we if we found any issue so it is not the issue that we found only because of janky frame then we have to back track and to find the at that time what is the cpu level what is the memory level and uh, what is the uh, activity life cycle performance also we need to check that what is uh, the time of on create so that we we have an idea ke we here from here the issue is basically injecting in our code and it is not behaving properly as it is needed so they all are interlinked to each other moving on to the next metrics it's battery so battery performance is quite important so can any one of you tell me why like do you think that uh, an app consuming more battery will keep that app in your phone you will definitely not you'll move away from that app so that is one of the key researches that uh, has proven that people uninstall an app basically and majorly because of its battery consumption so it becomes absolutely necessary again to capture this metric then so <clears throat> how do we capture it we capture it using google battery store in tool which internally reads the uh, android bug report file to give you the consumers of your battery so what are the key metrics that we get out of this utility so uh, we get the battery used by an app the major services running 
and the weight loss services and its name, its count. So that is the information that we get. So how do we compute it? So we, uh, as Vicky has already talked about, we have a espresso suit built in. So we have multiple scenarios. So a user behaves with an app differently. So a user can be a lofty user using the app continuously, a regress user, maybe of 30 minutes or so. It could be that the app is in background state. He opened the app, put it in background, moved away to some other app. He put the app in idle state and or the uh, phone in idle state and left it overnight. So his battery has been consumed in all these things. So these are the areas where uh, we got inputs as well that these are the areas that where the battery consumption is quite high. So what we did is that we had these scenarios built up using our espresso suit and we had our Jenkins CI in place. So we integrated the, Gen, uh, the espresso suit with the Jenkins CI, got that automated. And after the execution of a test, we were generating a bug report using the ADB command. So on the device, uh, we had this generated and stored in the storage. So bat uh, the battery stored in uh, Docker image was installed on a dedicated server. So that server used to pull that image, the bug report file that we had, because it needs that bug report file to compute the data. So once the data was computed, so it's not everything that we were looking for. There are some key constraints as we talked about the key matrices that we were looking out of that report. So we built a service around it to get the relevant data from the server. So the, we got the relevant uh, data from that storage server and stored it in our open TSDB. So after that, it was visualization. So this is how it, we do it at Mikmadrip. So if we talk about the reporting, so that's quite interesting that if, as we see that the two graphs here, so one says battery use CPU and the other says battery use device. So what's the difference between these two? So battery use devices, when your application is executing, so what is the actual amount of battery it is consuming? This is the percentage of that. So it's 0.3 percent, let's say here. And the battery use CPU is when your application is uh, running, so other than your code, there's a system level services that are being executed. Kernel is taking part, uh, care of that, CPU is taking care part of that. So battery use CPU is the other part wherein these system services are being used. So that is the sum of these two. So <clears throat> then we have, uh, as we talked about scenarios that we had scenarios built up. So if you, would, uh, if you would see in the top, we had filters there mentioning scenario, half an hour. So we had half an hour, the idle scenario, the overnight scenarios, across devices, across app versions. So we have an uh, app to app comparison, app version to app version comparison. So that's how we do it. Then uh, the information about services is given in the graph below. So this is the uh, count of the launch count of a service. And this is the time in seconds that the service took in average. So this also gives us information. There could be services which are not required in such lofty count or there could be services which are being running for much longer time. So you can work on those areas and get that information corrected so that your battery improves. So the third thing was wake lock. So this is the count of wake locks and the seconds that that average wake lock, particular met, uh, wake lock name was running. So these three matrices gave us major issues around a battery and we were able to fix them. So the issues were like the wake up alarm frequency was increased. Then there's a location manager uh, wake up. So that is basically used for uh, Google Geofence API, a feature using that. So it was increased around 20 times as compared to the last app version which is quite high. So we were able to capture it before releasing it to the production, getting a user feedback. And then uh, there were increased Wi-Fi scans. So it could be that uh, the application does not need to scan the Wi-Fi uh, adapter, radio adapter that many times as it is doing at the moment. So you can get hold of that as well. So these were the issues that we were able to fix using this battery utility. So now we have uh, captured the, all the key matrices that is needful in performance testing. As we cannot measure it, then we cannot fix it. So now it's our solely responsibility that how we are going to fix this kind of issue. Because in uh, this comes under the category of performance engineering. So once we raise any performance related issue, then we have to provide a root cause analysis for the issue that why this issue is happening. Like either it is a memory or CPU, either it is a slow UI or it is a battery issue. And what is the cause for this issue? So now the performance engineering is basically a manual task in which we need to we capture the heap dump, uh, thread dump and the method trace and the battery uh, battery related information and we check that the, what is uh, uh, actually happening at that particular amount of time 
then we capture the uh, insightful information and provide uh, the information to the developer so that they can check into and they can fix it. So in performance engineering basically uh, manual task but for thread uh, analysis we have one automated solution in which uh, we capture the android uh, thread, uh, thread uh, and the thread uh, method trace is there basically method tracing is a uh, profiler we can easily get by android profiler if we run uh, android profiler in android studio we found a method trace option is there if we uh, start and stop it then one trace file is generated and we can humanly read it uh, in a uh, humanly readable format so this is the solution for the automated solution for the uh, method trace file or the thread dumping so in which uh, it helps this uh, this is a utility the, it runs for a uh, activity like this is the first uh, nfr related test cases are there so it is uh, it is combined with this uh, test cases uh, this utility is with this uh, uh, framework we have a one uh, separate suit for the thread analysis so what for all the uh, test cases we are using for the for uh, capturing the nfr we have integrated it with the uh, method trade uh, also so for every activity we capture this kind of information and we check that how many number of thread are uh, running at that particular amount of time so we are taking a top 10 thread here which is uh, running on a long duration for a particular screen and then we call the sub of the thread there what is the sub of the thread in, uh, the thread is internally calling multiple thread or multiple methods so the information we are calling and the third one is the sub is uh, calling our uh, java classes and java class methods so like you can uh, see here like the method the class name is evutils and one method is calling inside the method name is wait is calling multiple times so this is a basically a framework the framework that we are integrated in our uh, uh, espresso framework we run our scenario we run our scenario for a particular test script and we uh, compute that uh, method trace file we capture the file this file is saved in the device itself and we process the dot trace file for uh, as this is a, a, a huge file it is around more than 80 mb of file so we need a two thread for parallel processing the first thread do the capture the thread, uh, thread information and link it with the thread, uh, thread id when we send this id to a different thread then it process the internal information of the particular thread like internal callee internal sub callee information and sub callee calling the methods and classes itself it capture the all the uh, all such information and we pass this data to our database and we visualize the data here is the code link for the same and this is the visualization uh, this is a so we have a one uh, test cases which are related to our hotel detail test cases in which we launch our application we search and hotel and we found the hotel detail where we provide uh, all the hotel related uh, hotel related information so we have a scenario like this then these are the top 10 thread we have a we can uh, limit the thread how many thread we want to show here so we have a limit here for 10 we are showing a top 10 thread that are taking more time for uh, this particular scenario so these are the thread information and here is the number of sub -colli. how thread is calling uh, main thread is calling 100 sub -colli, suppose and the sub -colli is, uh, is again calling uh, 50 thread so we need to debug into to check so we finally we come into a method level okay this method should not suppose we have a scenario in this this method should not call uh, twice but it is uh, calling more than five times or ten times then we can easily check that there is something mismatch in this particular uh, class level or method level so we can backtrack and find that this may be a cause not a defi uh, definite cause but this may be a cause so we uh, we can find this kind of information here we also find the entry time and the exit time of the thread when this thread was introduced and when this thread was uh, released by the operating system or our application so all the thread level information we, we have here so it it uh, helps us while uh, we are uh, uh, going to fix the issue and we provide uh, information uh, regarding the cause of the issue so all uh, the parameter that we have covered is the uh, in, in inside a performance testing or performance engineering so these uh, as we can say that 
we are capturing the overall application performance and we are also capturing the appli uh, activity level performance if suppose application performance is high then we will navigate to the test case uh, test script level check where we have a memory cpu if we not found any information then we will backtrack and check the activity life cycle that uh, the all the thing like time is on um, within threshold or not if it is not then we will check the ui related performance in which we will check the uh, um, janky frames and slug, um, frozen frames information and we also check the database like of thing that we can check so the all the matrices internally they are connected while we while we are fixing the issue and we need to re engineering of all the tasks that we have performed here so these are the all the thing that we uh, uh, covered in our whole whole session so this thing we can also achieve the same thing uh, by a uh, apm or any other open source tool it is not only constrained with the uh, espresso itself but it uh, very requirement to requirement what we are going to capture and this thing we have captured for the make my trip we can easily capture it for any application available just we need to pass the package name and our requirement as, as, as in what in what manner we need a data suppose we have a graphical representation but suppose your requirement is different you want a data in a different format just you need to make a model classes in a different manner and the same utility is a plug and play utility you can we can integrate in any application any e-commerce application available in the market Hi, uh, this is Santosh. So I have a question like uh, regarding the battery consumption. So you mentioned you use uh, for Android some mystery run tool which you can uh, capture the data. So coming to iOS, like uh, is there any tool available where you can uh, capture the battery consumption? Uh, for uh, iOS, till now we are capturing via Xcode itself. In Xcode, there is a uh, energy uh, energy performance uh, tab is there in which you can check the all the information but it is not an automated solution till now okay we are, we are working on it but via energy performance you can check that the what are the uh, like as uh, ios has the different parameter the uh, ios don't have any backlog or uh, uh, any any kind of uh, scans are there they have a different scheme they 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 need some checks like uh, uh, they they actually they have a different check so you can find a, a dot uh, dot um, jet jet file will be generated in a inside a x code and you can extract the data like they even even uh, you can see the jet file information related, related to the controller and the related dot swift file itself you can find the information in such a depth level ki from which class you are getting a uh, energy leak okay. so by further investigating the uh, file you can get a information in a class level that is not possible in uh, that is not there in uh, android but in ios you can get it because of this class dot swift class or dot h or dot uh, f class you are uh, accumulating or you are getting a more uh, energy tweaks so you mean like uh, we need to write test cases in the native c with swift or to simulate the actions and get the data I am uh, uh, I am telling this is a manual process actually okay. not a, or, ha, there is one profiler is there in which a, there is one energy uh, energy tab is there like memory leak in the same uh, tab you can get a energy uh, then you can find you can perform your scenario and you can after starting your scenario you can put your app on a idle state and after uh, uh, half an hour you can just start the scenario the file will be generated in the and it will be open in a GUI then you can further analyze it yeah thank you I'm sorry I guess we need to take the questions offline because we're considering the time so thanks uh, location Ishma. Thank you.